If you've been following along, we've been taking a tour of the Roxbury area of the Commonwealth. In my last video, we went to Fallon's department store and today we are visiting the Shaw High School. Like all of the buildings in Roxbury, Shaw High School is swarming with super mutants. Upon entry, you immediately get attacked by one on a nearby balcony and rushed by a super mutant hound. The rest are deeper in the school, giving you a chance to explore the nearby rooms. In the small room immediately to the left of the entrance is the faculty terminal. There are many faculty terminals in the school and they all say the same story. Before the bombs dropped in 2077, a man named Ronald Tanner was the principal of Shaw High School. Through a series of memos to his staff, we learned that Shaw High School recently received an increased budget from the school district thanks to the improved test scores of the students. Principal Tanner is not humble about this at all and indeed takes a lot of the credit for himself. He says, since leadership starts at the top, I will be accepting the Administrative Officer of the Year Award at next month's school district meeting. He does not plan to mention any of the other teachers and he explains this by saying, they asked me to keep my speech short, so I'm gonna keep my thanks only to those closest to the project so I can spend more time talking about my thoughts and plans for the coming years. He confirms that the school will receive a budget increase next year, but tries to tamp down expectations by saying, well, this increase is probably gonna be small. Even so, he plans to allocate some funds to upgrade equipment and facilities. He then thanks everyone for their hard work by inviting them to a 45 minute mixer over the weekend. Talk about a skin flint. But it seems like those promised upgrades to equipment and facilities never came. Principal Tanner explains this by saying, look, I'm as confused as all of you. I ordered the new equipment and I just don't know where it is. I called the district office and they assure me that top men are looking into what is likely a shipping error. He then says, look, until the new equipment comes, just make do with what you have. After all, our students had their increased test scores with that same equipment, so if it's not broke, don't fix it. The next terminal entry is our first indication that something strange is going on here. The note is from Principal Tanner, but it says, read only. This is likely not an instruction to his staff, but more a characteristic of the email. It's likely that this message was set to read only so that it couldn't be deleted. Why would anyone want to delete it? Well, we find out by reading it. What is supposedly an email from Principal Tanner starts off by giving his entire staff the rest of the week off and all of the students as well. He instructs the teachers to cancel all plans, cancel all tests, excuse their classes, and leave in a quiet, orderly manner. He says that he will be very busy in his office adjusting his hairpiece. He then says that the history class will no longer give any grades but A, and then signs the memo, I am an idiot, Principal Butt Toots. P.S. Rusty Burton for Homecoming King. Yeah, doesn't take a nuclear physicist to figure out that this is likely a forged email from Rusty Burton himself. Principal Tanner confirms this in his fourth and final email, where he says, it goes without saying that I'm extremely disappointed in the gullibility of the faculty during last week's events. We learn from Principal Tanner that the entire staff did not realize that it was a fake email and they all took a week off. <laughs> <laughs> Principal Tanner did not take this well. He says, unfortunately, anyone who took the week off, which was all of you, is going to have docked pay for the days missed. He also expresses his frustration that he wasn't able to contact any of these teachers, none of whom, apparently, was within reach of a telephone while they were gone. Looks like these teachers are so miserable working here that they leapt at the opportunity to leave the school, even though they probably realized, as would any sane individual, that the previous email was a hoax from student Rusty Burton. Security was pretty lax at Shaw High School, which made the delinquency of its students even easier. Apparently, all of the teachers had been using the default factory passwords for all of their terminals. It's likely that Principal Tanner did as well. This is what made it easy for Rusty Burton to hack into one to forge an email from Principal Tanner. Tanner ends his email by saying, finally, Rusty Burton will be absent from class for the next few weeks. Oh dear. 
Looks like Principal Tanner finally put two and two together, and I am suddenly concerned for the fate of young Mr. Burton. Why would he be missing for two weeks? Will Principal Tanner do something deadly to the poor boy? Or perhaps some other arrangement is going on? Directly next to the facility's terminal is the door to the principal's office. You can pick the lock, but we'll save this room to explore in a minute. In the cafeteria, we find a staircase that leads down to the basement. It looks like super mutants have been here for quite a while. Their meat bags litter the entire place. While exploring the basement, we find a hatch in the furthest right-hand corner. What could be inside? We will save this for an upcoming video on Relay Tower OSC 527. So stay tuned for that video. This high school has a lot of very interesting loot. We find an unusually high concentration of Mentats here. There's also a substantial supply of whiskey, particularly underneath teacher's desks and in the teacher's lounge. On the second floor, in a partially collapsed schoolroom, we find one remaining student terminal that is not busted. Luckily, this terminal was used by Rusty Burton. It looks like Rusty's terminal has been altered from its default factory settings. Some rogue software has disabled the read-only settings, the decency filters, vulgarity blockers, and anti-gaming software. Oh my, it sounds like Rusty is quite the delinquent. He's also lacking in basic manners. He tells people to go away, to stop reading his terminal, and then calls them all jerkwads and says he's going to give them an atomic wedgie. What's peculiar about Rusty Burton is that his personality seems to change as time goes on. In his first terminal entry, we learn that he is a big bully. Probably not the smartest of chaps, but he can beat up nerds. He managed to get the nerd Clayton to fix his terminal up for him, and then he says, well, Clayton did a good job with this terminal. So after I steal his lunch money, maybe I won't pound him quite so hard. He also has a poor grasp of the English language. He spells therapist as therapist and principal with an S and a U. Yeah, not the brightest of chaps. In his second note, we learned something shocking. Principal Tanner pulled Rusty Burton out of class and instructed him to start selling Mentats around school. In exchange, the principal gave Rusty a longer lunch period and took some of the demerits off of his permanent scholastic record. He admits that he started eating the Mentats himself and he says that they make him feel weird, but that the things his history teachers say are actually starting to make sense. In his third note, his spelling has dramatically improved. He's using longer, more complicated words like distribute, miscreants, deduced, and he spells them correctly. This is clearly a side effect of his use of Mentats. Remember, Mentats increase intelligence. Hancock tells us that Mentats are his chem of choice because they make him feel like an intellectual. Clearly, Rusty Burton is feeling the same way. His grades have improved. From a dunce in detention, he came home the other day with a B plus in one of his courses, something he has never had before. But Rusty is using his newfound intelligence for other means. You see, he's still a bully. He is still a delinquent. In his fourth note, we learn that he has discovered Principal Tanner's plot. The reason Principal Tanner got Rusty to hand out Mentats to all of the kids was so that their grades would improve. The school got better standardized test scores because the students were all using Mentats. This was Tanner's strategy to get more money from Superintendent Marcello. Rusty found a way to twist this to his advantage. He knew that Principal Tanner left his door unlocked when visiting the restroom. One day, he snuck into the principal's office and made a clay pressing of Principal Principal Tanner's key, from which he had a duplicate made. Then one day when Principal Tanner was out, he used the key to get inside Principal Tanner's office and hack into his terminal. There he says he found a stash of Mentats, and he also read Principal Tanner's personal logs confirming that Principal Tanner was pocketing most of the school funds that he got from Superintendent Marcello. He was using Mentats to increase the intelligence of his students so they would have better test scores that would earn the school more money which he then put in his own pocket. He ends by saying that he has arranged a meeting with Principal Tanner. I'm doing most of the hard work, he says. Why shouldn't I benefit from the cash flow too? In the cooler next to his terminal is the very key that he used to access the principal's office. Going back downstairs, you can get into the principal's office and read the principal's terminal. 
This terminal has all of the employee entries that the faculty terminals do, but it also has some personal entries from Principal Tanner. We learn that Principal Tanner is a former Vault Tech sales agent who somehow got this job. Superintendent Marcello was breathing down his neck and threatened to fire him if he didn't improve test scores at Shaw High School. So Principal Tanner forms an idea. He made a list of all of the juvenile delinquents at the school. Paul Picard, Jason Eichmann, Shelley Deans, Rusty Burton, and Luke Anderson. He chose these delinquents because he thought that they knew how to fly under the radar without being seen, and they know how to keep their mouths shut. It looks like Principal Tanner settled upon Rusty Burton to become the agent of his scheme. He then admits to his plan of providing the students with a steady supply of Mentats, which they will distribute throughout the student body. It's from Rusty that we learned that he was siphoning funds from the school for his own personal game, and on this terminal we seem to get confirmation. Principal Tanner is talking about a new summer beach house that he's going to buy, and he's really excited about how his wife is going to be visiting her mother so that he will have the beach house all to himself. He then confesses plans to retire early. There would be no way for him to do that on a mere principal's salary. Unless, of course, he was getting money some other way. We then find an email from Superintendent Marcello himself. Excellent work on your numbers, Principal Tanner. Standardized test scores have skyrocketed since our talk last year. Bravo indeed! It is Superintendent Marcello who gives his school a substantial budget increase for the coming school year. Marcello hopes that the funds will be used to cover raises for the staff and the administration. They've certainly earned it, he says. And so did Principal Tanner. Marcelo gives him a bonus in his next paycheck. But of course we know that the funds never make it to the employees because Tanner pockets it. In his desk, we find a key to the library. And as Rusty told us in the student terminal, when we pick the lock to Principal Tanner's closet, we find a huge stash of Mentats. You can walk away with upwards of 26 pieces if you loot every single one in the school. Now that we have the library key, we can go back upstairs and unlock the door to the library. Here we find one turret that we have to deal with, and we must be careful for there are landmines on the ground. Here we deal with the remaining super mutants in Shaw High School. We also find a book return terminal here. There's nothing terribly interesting for sale. The only thing useful is five different Mentats for sale, each which sells for 100 tokens. That seems like an exorbitant price for one piece of Mentats, because that comes out to seven overdue books. In the nearby locked door, we find what looks like an interrogation room. On the table next to the typewriter is a holotape labeled Property of Rusty Burton. All right, Burton. I'm here. Hurry up. Out with it. I have a lot of plans for this summer, and none of them involve chatting with you. Why, Ronald, I'm hurt. Skipping the pleasantries and getting right down to business. And after all we've accomplished together this semester. For the last time, you little snot, it's Principal Tanner. Fine, Principal Tanner. I'll make this quick. You've been giving me mentors to distribute to the students quietly and under the nose of the faculty. I have. Because of this, test scores have skyrocketed. The school board has noticed. We received quite an increase in funding. But the faculty doesn't know. No one here knows except you. And now, me. You've been skimming off the top and pocketing most of the funds. I want 50% of what you're bezzling. We'll go to Superintendent Marcella with this. What? How did you... When did you get so smart? You've been giving me brain pills every week. What did you expect, you pathetic little man? Well, so what if it's all true? No one's going to believe you. You're just a kid, and I'm the principal, and more importantly, an adult. Oh, I think they'll believe me, Ronald. Especially after they hear you admit everything in your own words. What are you talking about? Wait, is that a hollow tape? You son of a... So it looks like Principal Tanner's plan backfired on him. Yes, he made the students smarter. Yes, he improved test scores. But in so doing, he gave a little villain named Rusty Burton everything he needed to blackmail the principal.
On the nearby table, we find a copy of Unstoppables, which permanently grants you a 1% chance of avoiding all damage from an incoming attack. We also find a stack of overdue books that you can cash out at the book return terminal just outside. And it's here that we find the steamer trunk. We don't know the ultimate fate of Rusty Burden or Principal Tanner. It's likely that all of their plotting and scheming was in vain. Principal Tanner and Rusty Burton likely died in their homes the day the bombs dropped. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of the Shaw High School in Fallout 4. What a creative story and what a fun place to explore. The Mentats are going to be very useful for anyone using them at a chemistry station to craft new chems. You can get a lot of experience that way. I really enjoyed piecing this story together and I hope you all enjoyed listening to it. As I said earlier, never fear, ladies and gentlemen, we will explore that hatch in the basement in an upcoming video. So please be sure to subscribe so that you get notified when I publish that video. Do you have any thoughts on Shaw High School? Is there anything in history that you can remember that might have served as inspiration for Bethesda to create this story? Let me know in the comments section below. I read all of your comments and I use them as inspiration for my future videos. And if you'd like to chat about this topic with other like-minded individuals on the Oxhorn Discord server, be sure to click the invitation link in the description below. And if you like what I do and you'd like to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning bright and early with a brand new video.